an exhilarated spiny ant waves its antennae through the air, smelling and taking in all the new fresh smells of its new home. What a strange but cool place, it thought, as it turned back to rejoin its fellow sisters. Along this towering driftwood, the spiny ants explore the strange mosses growing all about. Along this giant fern, the ants hang out. And this ant here shouts, Okay, so where are we supposed to be putting the dead bodies again? It seemed the entire ant colony system had been disrupted. These were strange lands the ants had never before charted. You see, these ants, a bit dazed and confused at the moment, wandered out from the wreckage that was once their home. But little did these ants know, this new lush rainforest kingdom was our beloved gift created just for them. They're soon about to realize that these new expansive territories are now their forever home and fit them perfectly. Welcome everyone to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. I just wanted to acknowledge and thank our awesome friends at the Ants Underground Kingdom who sponsored today's episode and who just celebrated their first anniversary. So happy birthday Ants Underground Kingdom. The Ants Underground Kingdom is the world's first ant and insect themed simulation strategy mobile game that has attracted over 30 million players worldwide and has entered the top three game charts on the App Store and Google Play in multiple countries. In the Ants Underground Kingdom, you are the ultimate ant ruler to collect the resources, lead the queen, train special ants, grow the colony, create alliances, defend against enemies, and build your own ant colony. It's very much like what we do on this channel, which is why I love it. Inside the ant hill, you can explore and build. It includes a gacha system where you can cultivate your ultimate ant army with so many awesome special ants of different species. And my favorite part, outside the ant hill is a rich, real-life environment full of adventure and biodiversity. It's truly like being part of the ant world. The new ant season will begin online this month with an upgraded battlefield, 12 new season super ants, and exclusive season rewards, all in celebration of the game's one-year anniversary. So join the ant season to fight with your alliance by clicking the link and code I've put in the description box of this video. And now, on with the episode. AC family, today we're about to create the most epic, naturalistically designed terrarium for our new beloved ant colony of spiny ants. Last week I asked you guys what kind of housing you wanted to see them in, and the majority of you had voted for a naturalistically designed terrarium. And so today, we're going to do just that. But do stay tuned until the end, because I'm going to be asking you a very important question regarding these spiny ants. All this and more, coming up. Now before we go ahead and start building this ant colony, their epic terrarium, let's have a quick look at our new ant colony, shall we? Within this jar is a huge colony of 300 to 400 spiny ants from the genus Polyrachis. They're called spiny ants due to their unique spines that adorn their bodies. They're such a beautiful species, with matte black bodies, paired with golden iridescent gasters. Check them out. Don't they look just stunning? Now this colony is a polygynous colony, which in ant science simply means there are multiple egg-laying queens in the colony. I did spot a few of the queens emerging from the paper towel for brief periods, but I can't seem to spot them now here. Can you guys see any queens? Let me know if you do at any point in this video. 10 points for you if you do. The colony was actually collected by a friend from outside, and I was totally happy to take them in, because I've always wanted to own a thriving Polyrachis colony, but haven't had much luck in the past with the genus. Hopefully this spiny ant colony will adapt well to captivity, and as you're about to see shortly, I have some really great plans for their terrarium that I think will really give them the best shot possible at thriving under our care. 
Their main living area in the jar is attached to a tube, which leads to the place where I have been placing their food. A Nacy test tube portal from AntsCanada.com. Now in last week's video, we gave them their first meal. And AC family, have a look at this. In just a day, they completely finished their test tube of sugar water. In fact, they were also halfway done finishing their second dose of sugar water. Man, do these spiny ants have a sweet tooth. They also are in the process of finishing a second superworm that I gave them. They love their meat too. The ants gathered in the AC tester portal, feasting like lionesses on their carcass. That white fluff ball back there are cotton fibers which they've pulled from the test tubes. In fact, the ants are treating the test tubes like extensions of their nest as well, as they all huddle inside, napping, grooming themselves, and convening. But little do these ants know, they're about to get the ultimate home of their dreams in a moment. They're currently living in a crumpled up ball of paper towel, which is an okay temporary home, but not a good long-term home. You see, these polyrachis ants are known as lesser weaver ants, and they don't nest underground like most ants. In fact, they nest above ground, in balls of not paper towel, but mud and debris, all glued together using silk spun from their larvae. Polyrachis ants create such epic debris and mud ball nests in nature. And this is one reason I've been dying to keep spiny ants, because I wanted to see and watch the ants create their mud nests and catch it all on film. Which brings me now to my epic plans for their housing. Guys, I feel like it's been forever since we've built a terrarium. So this was going to be awesome. AC family, behold, the empty glass shell that will contain the new world we're about to build for our beloved spiny ant colony. It's a 20 gallon tank, which I feel will be the perfect amount of space for our colony of spiny ants to live in comfortably. Before we start creating our ants new world, there was one important thing I needed to take care of first. AC family, presenting the magic sauce. This is Fluon also known as PTFE, or Insecta Slip. This cool stuff, when painted on a flat surface, dries and becomes super slippery to ants. I'm going to need to apply a layer to the top part of the tank to keep our spiny ants from escaping. Grabbing a little cup and pouring in a little Fluon. And now to apply it to the top of the tank. Once the barrier completely hardens into an enamel, it makes crossing impossible for ants which you guys will see later. It's basically a type of liquid Teflon and an ant keeper's trick to keep ants inside their enclosures. You can also use baby powder mixed with rubbing alcohol as this is also effective, but baby powder needs to be continually applied every few months because it wears away quicker. All right, with the flu on dried, all was now set. It was time to start creating the new world for our spiny ants. This is the fun part. Here we go. First, adding a gravel layer. This will act as a drainage layer for the terrarium, so it doesn't get waterlogged and destroy the entire biological system of the terrarium. I used to skip this drainage layer step in my terrariums in the past, but I have found over the years of making terrariums that those terrariums with drainage layers lasted the longest and were the most successful in the long run. Next, I added a layer of soil. Then, I added some rice husk. Rice husk not only makes a great soil conditioner for plants, but seeing as these ants are polyrachis ants, which need debris to build their nests, I figured I should give the ants all the building material they need. And in my mind, rice husk would make an awesome debris material for their nest. I also added some carbonized rice husk, which is basically burned rice husk, which not only adds nutrients to the soil for our plant life, but also acts as a purifier, like carbon, and could also make a great nest building material for our spiny ants. I mixed the three layers of soil and rice husk together, 
And when it was all done, this is what our new spiny ant terrarium looked like. AC family, I, your creator of worlds, am pleased to present to you Polyraxia, the lush rainforest floor terrarium, which will become the future home of our spiny ants. Do you like it? It's a beautiful tropical forest floor corner of ferns, mosses, plants, leaf litter, pebbles, rock, and driftwood. Some of you may have just spotted the isopod, and indeed, to make these lands bioactive, I did acquire some leaf litter and soils from our isopodium, our isopod farm. These important soil creatures, which also include other tiny organisms, like worms and springtails, will be the pioneering generation of detritivores within these lands, which basically mean they will help break down organic matter in the terrarium, and their poop will go on to nourish the plants. They're essentially like the biological cleanup crew of Polyraxia, and are important players in the entire biological system. So let me give you a quick tour of the territories before we go ahead and add the ants in. I've adorned the lands with some princess ferns to give the territories a royal forest feel, small red nerve plants to give the lands a little pop of color. I've added some seru stone framed by beds of sphagnum moss. A pebbly path cuts through the middle of the terrarium, giving the lands a greater feeling of depth and separation. And at the back, I've placed some beautiful driftwood, which I think the ants will truly love. Actually, my hopes was that the ants were going to build their nest balls of debris and mud, either here on that driftwood piece, as it's got a ton of little pockets and caverns that can make good starting points for their nests, or here on this side. But the reality was, the spiny ants could be building their mud nests anywhere in Polyraxia. Where do you guys think they'll nest build? Leave your guesses in the comments. Well, AC family, there was only one way to find out. It was now time to add in the colony. Let's do this. I laid the colony at the foot of their lush new territories. Now at first, I wasn't so sure how I was going to transport the ants into the terrarium. But after considering all options, I felt the safest way was to simply open up the jar and dump the entire colony, paper towel ball, AC test tube portal, test tubes, and all, directly into Polyraxia. And that was exactly what I did. I opened the jar and detached the AC test tube portal, placed it inside Polyraxia, turned the jar upside down, and pulled the paper towel ball from within. Into Polyraxia they went. The ants instantly went into hijinks and were biting my hands and arms as I tapped the remaining ants inside the jar into the terrarium. And done. And just like that, the colony was officially in. The ants were clearly a bit dazed by the sudden crash of their home into some strange new world. The top of the lands had some strange barrier that, oop, made any ant trying to cross it slip. These lands were a very foreign place indeed, but interesting to explore. The ants quickly learned that the barrier was definitely not worth wasting their time trying to cross. But the ants at ground level, stepping off their paper towel nest, were soon pleasantly surprised to discover that they had somehow entered a vast and truly magical place. Many ants broke off from the colony to begin the exploration expeditions. I loved watching the ants explore all parts of the driftwood and the mosses. They climbed the ferns, and look, it seemed some ants, including a male ant, we're already beginning to show interest in the driftwood areas in which I was hoping the ants would eventually decide to nest. 
How awesome! Oh, I hope they found the Driftwood a suitable place to start building. That would be super cool. For now, I assume the ants would just be treating the paper towel ball and the AC Testo portal as their nest areas for now. And look, I even see an ant larva spinning silk on the test tube walls. So that seems to be what is happening right now. But I know in no time, one ant will find a dark place within Polyraxia, an ideal place to start building. And it will start the chain reaction of convincing other ants to start the nest building process. And when that time comes, they've got a ton of dirt and debris to work with. Finally, as is tradition on this channel, when introducing an ant colony into a new home, we offer a housewarming gift. On this rock platform, I placed a pre-killed roach. I cut it up to make it easier for the ants to get at its tasty innards. And at first the ants didn't seem interested in the roach, as they were more preoccupied with exploring for now. But soon, the ants discovered our gift and began to feast. This was all so satisfying, right guys? Now at the start of the video, I mentioned that I'd be asking you guys a very important question regarding these ants, and it's this. What should we name them? Now last week you guys gave me a ton of awesome name suggestions for this colony, and Eurasi Senate and I have looked them over and have agreed on our top 5 favorite name suggestions, which I have placed under the pinned comment of this video. Now to vote for your favorite name, Simply give a thumbs up on the name option you like the most, or you can give more than one option a thumbs up if you can't pick just one favorite. The name option with the most number of likes will be the official name of our new spiny ant colony. I can't wait to see which one you guys vote for. Make sure to choose their name wisely. Overall, this was such a successful colony introduction to their new terrarium. I, your creator of worlds, must say, I've missed this terrarium building process a lot, and I'm grateful to all of you for joining me today. And now all the building was in the hands of our spiny ants. As I watched the ants exploring their new home, I had so many questions. Where were they going to choose to build their nest? Would it be in the driftwood to the right or the left? Or would they just build a mud ball all over their paper towel ball? Or perhaps around the AC test tube portal? How would the ants enjoy life in Polyraxia? Well, AC family, I was positive we were about to find out and discover the true joys of owning a huge spiny ant colony. I couldn't wait to see what was coming up next in this continuing story of our beloved spiny ants. It's Ant Love Forever.